A new book is teaching people how to thrive and live a more satisfying life. Don't we all want that? Yeah, we do. It's called Roar. It goes into the second half of your life before it's too late. It's by Michael Clinton. Now, Roar stands for this. Reimagine yourself, own who you are, act on what's ne next, and reassess your relationships to get you there. Clinton is also a special media advisor to the CEO of Horse Corporation, where I am an editor-at-large for Oprah Daily. Roar is published by Atria, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. That's a division of Viacom CBS. So now that we've gotten all the disclaimers out of the way, <laughs> let me introduce you to Michael Clinton. Hello, Michael. It's also a very good book. Exactly. What's up, Michael? It's, also it's, a very good it's book. great to be Let's here. See. Thank you so much for having me. Roar is more than just a Katy Perry song, I have to say, because <laughs> you say... It is time to roar, will contradict and challenge everything you thought about getting older. So based on your book, you say forget words like age appropriate, focus on... How about person appropriate? I like it. Yeah. Banish words like retire. Let's think. rewire. I like mm. that. Here we go. Forget self-imposed ages and focus on... Self-imposed growthism. I really you know? like that. I like that. And it's not a midlife crisis, it's a midlife... Awakening. Because Time you... to awaken and... Go into the second half of your life. In a because good way. you say if you're if you're a healthy 50 year old, what does that mean? You know, if you're a healthy 50 year old today, you can potentially live to be 90. Yeah. And so, you know, the construct we were given about a post 50 life is sort of blowing up into smithereens because you're having all of these people live into their 60s and 70s and 80s, and you can have a second career, a new love a new lifestyle. So there's a lot of possibilities in the second half. You always say, Michael, wear your age as a badge of honor. Because, you know, I like to hear when people say, you know, 50's a new 70, 40's a new 60. You say, stop it. I don't like that at all, Why? Gail. I think, you know, 60 is the new 60. <laughs> I mean, 70 is the new 70. I mean, right. look at these great role models we have, you know, Jennifer Lopez, or look at Lenny Kravitz. I mean, he's amazing, you know, or Sting. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of role models in our public in our public life, but I think we've got a lot of people who are reimagining what 60 and 70, let's own it. Let's just really be proud of it. One of yeah. uh, the favorite parts of the book for me that resonated was owning your wins. And you yeah. write about SWAT, right. strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. In there you say take out a piece of paper right. and be brutally honest Brutal. with yourself, yeah. which I love. Yeah. Do people need to be more brutally honest with themselves? You know, I, I like to say own where you are. Like take a really good hard look at where you are right now and be brutally honest. And SWAT's a good way to do it. You know, it's a really great sort of analysis and, and people tend to not do it. And when you're at that midlife, you have awakened, you've lived 25 years, so you can really sit down and think about a life you've lived so far yeah. and get ready for the next chapter, the next second half. You also advise people to take a hard look at their financial situation, where they are today, where they want to go. Not a comfortable act for a lot of people. Uh, let's talk about life layering, though. That's another yeah. concept I'd not heard before. It's in right. the book. What is it? How can it help people? So I think, you know, one of the things that people often get tied up in their seat, what they do for a living or their profession, and they forget to develop other parts of their life. So a life layering, you know, for me, it was adventure travel. I've traveled all over the world, yeah. 124 countries and counting. I was just in Ethiopia before the pandemic, which was great. But I've spent 25 years cultivating that layer. So if you build a layer of something that's interesting to you, travel, photography, whatever the case may be, you end up building this really rich and satisfying life. And you can start that any time. And you also say this, that when you, because you interviewed a lot of people for this yeah. book, uh, over the age of 50. How old are you, by the way, Mike? I am 68. Oh, Michael, a proud 68. You look great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think you look 68 great. 68 is the new 68. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 66. 66. There, we, the there 68. we go, Gail. We're in it together. But, but you said when you talk to people, their biggest life regret was what? If they were asked for a redo. Well, you know, we did a survey. First of all, we interviewed 40 amazing people. I call them the reimagineers. They are the role models that we want to follow. But we also did a survey, 630 people. And one of the questions was, if you could do a major redo, in your life, would you? 76% mm. said yes. Of the 300 wow. responses, the number one response, a third of the people said, I would redo my marriage or rethink the person that I married. Yeah, wow. which leads me to this. That was an anonymous it, survey? Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but in the book it says, if you had to choose between a wonderful romantic spouse to whom you'd be married for only a few years or a boring unromantic spouse for your entire life, which would you choose? For me, there is no choice. 
What was the overwhelming it, it, answer? It should be romance, yes. right? It should be romance. Yeah. Uh, but there were a lot of undecideds, so that was really. Which I means think that they're thinking about it. Yeah, they're it. thinking yeah. about it. We oftentimes yeah. talk about uh, this world being full of glass half empty and glass half full people. Oh, the glass overflowing. Right. Yeah. You mentioned glass overflowing and hanging around those people. What do you mean by hanging out with people who has a glass that's overflowing? Yeah. You know, have those positive people around you. This gets into the reassess your relationships. You know, who are the people who are your posse? You know, the people who are really supporting you, fill you and up. fill you up and yeah. surround yourself with them. And, you know, sometimes you may have to edit out those people who just, you know, aren't doing we'll that. Take, I'm all for we'll that. From yeah. You yeah. also say it's never too late to pivot in life. I don't know about that, Michael. You say it's never too late to pivot and do something new. Well, I think, you know, what's amazing is, you know, some great stories in the book. A woman at 53 who was a book editor decided to become a doctor, which is, you know, the journey that that, yeah. that takes. Yeah. Or, you know, a 68-year-old who's decided to launch a new business. You know, the, the biggest cohort, 26% of, of, of entrepreneurs in this country are people 55 to 64. Whoa. And, you know, that's a, that's a big number. Uh, you, we always think of the 20-somethings, yeah. but it's the 55 to 60. But they have the resources. They have the experience. They have yeah. the contacts. Start something new. I'm going to pivot. I'm going to relaunch my life as a 25-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. How about a marathon runner? I know that, you I've know, done a couple, I know actually. you're, yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael, thank you very much. Michael yes. Clinton is his name. Roar is the name of the book. It is on sale wherever you like to buy your books.